Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Untitled Heroes radio program. Please consider following and or liking the other people and their wonderful art in this video. Okay, here's some random stuff, uh, funny-ish tidbits of audio from Joe and myself, respectively. Real quick, big shout out to all my followers and subscribers. You people are awesome. Be thankful for what you have, because there's no better time like Thanksgiving Day. I had a dream of what the dark side looked like. It was an old ruined building. And there was a man standing above everyone else. And he made a speech about how his stormtroopers were expendable. And to prove the point, they took an entire hangar of stormtroopers and they blew it to hell. If I had a time machine, like the DeLorean or TARDIS, I would go back in time to stop every war I can. I'm kidding. There is nothing the past has to offer me that I can help or change. And if I could go to the future and change it, change it by altering the past, I don't believe any good would come of it. Supposing I could enter into a time-traveling machine to take me across time and space, I would go into the future, let's say 3000, the 31st century. Yes, the year 3000, when the world belongs to the roaches and humanity is non-existent. Or, assuming humanity did survive, and the Earth is in a peaceful, utopia-like state, I don't think I'd even like that. I guess that I wouldn't mind knowing what my own history is in the future, but I'm afraid that it might be disappointing. I'm not the biggest fan of time travel, but if my time machine had a reset button, I might just use it. I would like to use the time machine I have, but it runs off of hope. That is why I say I wish I had one, because, you see, I just don't have the faith to use my time machine to travel to the great beyond. There are too many problems with time travel. My time machine sits in my garage, just gathering dust. I will never use it. It's probably why my older self is trying to convince me to use it before it's too late. I will use my time machine. I need to tell myself that. But to tell you the truth, I have no idea where to go and what to do with that ability. Now I'm here, talking with myself, telling myself to use the thing before it's too late. Ah, I couldn't just be an average guy with superpowers. No, it had to come with a name and a costume. Oh well, let's get this over with. Why do we always associate alibi with lie? <sighs> I had a dream. During the night, I was a superhero. My family and I were at a church of some sort. I had been there before, in other dreams. This was a dream map. It was created by multiple places that I've been to, cobbled together with all the feelings and emotions attached, and jumbled in my dream. I don't remember what happened exactly, but I remember I was flying, and I was on fire. I didn't burn. But I was on fire. I could see all the buildings below me. They were so, so small. And I could see targets. And I could easily light them on fire just by looking at them and pointing. And then... I came down. Because it was lonely up there. The view was incredible, but I had no one to share it with. I have the perfect solution for this horrible pandemic that's going around. Here it is. We make everyone into a jack-o'-lantern-headed monster. But doctor, wouldn't that be bad for humanity? No, it would be the perfect thing for humanity. Why would you say that, doctor? Because, obviously, we're going to make everyone into an immortal monster. It's perfect. 
Oh, well, when you say it like that, I guess it sounds good. And that was the day humanity surrendered its freedom to become... Punctipi. Part pumpkin, part octopus. The end. Honor the fallen. Weep not their passing into the next realm. Praise their passing into the unknown. For it is braver far to pass on than to stay and persist. It takes a very brave man to live, and braver so to die. But this is not always so. Heed my words. The world around you may still have need of you. If this is so, stay and live. And he said, I will die. But if I die, others live. I must tell the story of my world, the story of Earth, a land called America, said the first brother, John something. The first writer in the Holy Handbook. Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. The worst dream I've had this year. I got in trouble with the law and by extension somehow the government. I don't know. I felt sold out. I screamed and I've never screamed like that in my life. I've never screamed that way in a dream. They took me to some base in Afghanistan, near the front, or so they said. They had monks train me to focus my mind. I had telekinesis of some sort, and it could be used to do dangerous things. And they had a lot of harsh drill instructors some of them teaching me privately how to fashion my body into the ultimate weapon. I was angry at everyone, including the rest of my family. I didn't want to speak to anybody. They never let me have a second of peace anyway. They put me in an experimental battle suit, a massive towering mech blue and it represented all that America had to offer its might and its savagery the rest of the army had mechs too but none as fast or deadly as mine on the battlefield I could use my telekinesis to slaughter droves of enemies somehow enhancing and propelling this mech I knew you wouldn't understand this, outsider. Please, do allow me to explain. In the Dwarven lands, we dwarves love our women, and our women love us. So, to have us prove our love to each other, our wives go out and beat another man's wife. And then, they proceed to beat that wife, that man. But... Why do they do that? Well, obviously, it's because... Blah, 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 I don't know where it goes. From all of us at the Untitled Heroes HQ, think of all the things you're grateful for, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, before I forget, the uh, last part of this radio thing is a special musical number by Surf Tons. Um, the song is called Watermelon.
Never change my heart